It's not a very good first impression <laughs> for, a, for a channel that's all about autism and mental health. <laughs> I seem to get this. God damn it. Looks like I'm going spiky. Autism has a lot of positives. You've got that attention to detail, you've got that extreme passion and concentration, you've got that sticking to routines, you've got all sorts of lovely stuff that make being autistic cool. But all powers come with a weakness, and today I'm here to talk about one of those weaknesses, and that is executive dysfunction. Yes, it's a very flamboyant and scientific sounding word. Why is executive functioning so difficult for autistic people? And what can you do? to improve that executive functioning. Executive dysfunction is one of those common things that just seems to pop up in most autistic individuals, or at least that's what I found talking to people on Instagram and Twitter and all sorts of those social media sites. It seems that executive dysfunction is rampant in the autistic community. But why? And what is it? Executive functioning is basically your ability to organise, place importance on, manage your life, the different many little niggly things that you have to do in order to maintain a healthy life and maintain a clean life. Think of executive functioning as the, the centre of your brain, the, the thing that pulls your life together. Like an executive board, like a meeting board, where all the businessmen in the, the little suits and ties get together and talk about different areas of the company. In a neurotypical brain, this executive function is considered to be normal. You know, I'm, I'm gonna say it. Considered to be normal, and normal does not mean good or bad. They have a handle on the sort of little intricacies of their day. Everyone's a little bit different. Some people are good at things and some people are more organised than other people and all that kind of stuff. All these little areas of the company work together to form a functioning healthy system. Some of the things that you can expect from an executive dysfunction is difficulties with hygiene, food preparation, hydration, cleaning, exercise, washing up the dishes, sleep, studying and education. For some reason, us autistics, we find it imperatively, not the right word, extraordinarily different. Difficult. God damn it. When you're autistic, your executive board is a little bit more focused on specific things, like, for example, your special interests. Those special interests, for a lot of us, considering most autistic people have either some sort of traumatic experience at school or in childhood, and also tend to have a lot of mental health problems, that makes special interests a really big grounding thing for us. It relaxes us, it entertains us, we're excited to do it, we're excited to learn about it, and because of that sometimes we can neglect other areas in our life. Now you may be thinking, as I probably am editing this video, why is he rattling so much about boards and executives and companies and stuff? Well, I know it's a little bit tedious, but I think it's a good metaphor. On my journey to personal development, I've literally gone through the entire list of negative traits related to an autism diagnosis that I had and tried to improve on them. So I worked on my socialising, I worked on my ability to form relationships. But one of the things that I have been neglecting for a long time is executive functioning. I am absolutely terrible. That's the short answer. I'm absolutely terrible with my executive functioning. I really struggle to get a solid brushing my teeth schedule. I, I struggle to make food for myself. I do struggle in those areas and it's something that over the over the year or so I've been trying to work on. Hygiene was the first thing that I, that I improved. When I went for a bad breakup I, I sort of looked at myself and realised just how disgusting I was. <laughs> so I started showering more often and I started you know, doing my hair up, which has obviously gone to hell now <laughs> we're in isolation. There's been times during lockdown where I've decided to work on, for example, washing my clothes. And I've managed to, you know, develop a good schedule around washing my clothes and getting them dried and hanging them up, taking out the recycling, taking out the rubbish. I still haven't got to the bottom of the cleaning. One of the difficulties of it is I find that I'm very good when I have one task that is extremely hard and it's something that I have to work on a lot and for long hours 
I'm great at doing that. I'm brilliant at doing that. I like the documentary, like any sort of video or podcast that I do. It's all the many little things that I have to maintain constantly in my environment. I'm sure you can agree that the thought of having a list full of small little things, even if they only take like a minute or something, it's just so much harder to get through them. It's trying to manage all of those things and organize them and a lot of time for it and know how much time things are gonna take you. I'm working myself up just talking about it. So let's get into how we can deal with it. Can you improve your executive functioning? Short answer, yes, but it's gonna be really hard. So I've got four or five little points that you can use, just do some, some sort of psychological trick that you can use. I'm not gonna say tricks, because the, the, the idea of tips and tricks videos just, just, just makes me wanna regurgitate. I don't wanna watch those videos. They're boring. I'm gonna give you three pointers that you can use. Do not get loads of things and say, right, I'm gonna work on my executive functioning and do and do everything that you're supposed to do and do and maintain everything all the time. Because if you do that, you're gonna overload yourself. You're gonna be mega stressed. So it's important to choose one or two things to work on. And also, you know, if, you, if you're gonna start making your own food, start small. Start with an, a mic, using a microwave, start with using a toaster and then move up to using, I don't know, like an oven and then move up to using a pan and making your own stuff. For example, one thing that I'm trying to do lately, which I failed at today, is making avocados on toast. It's relatively healthy, maybe not the toast aspect, but the avocado aspect and there is a partial amount of preparation that I need to do for it. But having that one thing to focus on helps you incorporate it into your routine easier. Number two, incorporate things into your routine. Slowly, of course. I've been doing my washing while I've been working on my media stuff. I use the washer as like a timer. I'll set it, set it on and it usually washes for about two and a half minutes. And I use that as a signal to have a break because I, I will just go the entire day working and I'll burn myself out. This doesn't have to be specifically to do with washing up, but it's just an example that, that I've used. And maybe there are some other areas of your life that you can do the same with. Tip number three is tying something that you're interested in with something that's productive and with something that's you know, mandatory, one of those executive functioning little things that you need to do. One of the ways that I do it is I start off with something that I like and I do something that's mildly productive but doesn't require much attention. So for example, my thing that I'd be interested in is playing RuneScape, you know, doing a bit of wood cutting, fishing for some lobsters with a cage, you know, all that exciting, thrilling stuff. I have started to listen to an audio book while I'm doing it, so it's got me used to and, and I, I quite enjoy listening to audiobooks. So now if I want to do some washing up, I'll stuck on an audiobook, I'll wash up and I'll, you know, I'll get something out of it because I'll be interested in the book. Another thing that you can do is use, you know, I could listen to an audiobook while I'm exercising just to get me out of the house to do a run. By tying it with things that are productive and only doing it with things that are productive is a good way to incentivize you to do it. Another thing that I've been doing is I've been watching a short educational video while I'm brushing my teeth in the morning. That's a good way to get me to brush my teeth because I find it absolutely horrific. I don't like the feel of it. And if I don't have something to distract me while I'm doing it, it's gonna be very hard to get myself to do it. The last point is give yourself a reward. Give yourself something positive, being able to focus on being healthy in the long run. Have a little bit of a treat now and again just to keep you going. It's gonna be better. And you can even get people around you like your family or your partner to incentivize you doing stuff. They might even wanna help you out, learn new skills and do something together. It might be a more of a social thing, you know? You've gotta tie things in to make it more appealing to do or else your dopamine system's gonna be like, hell no, I'm not doing this. I'm gonna go play RuneScape in my room, all day. Okay, so in conclusion, the bottom line, 
Improving your executive functioning is always going to be difficult. It's going to be a long, slow process that you're going to have to work on constantly for a long period of time. You've got to ease yourself into it or else you're just going to give up. That's the, that's the bottom line. Or, or at least it's going to throw your life into chaos and get rid of all your routines and stuff. There are a lot of benefits to, you know, having good executive functioning. You'll feel more independent. You'll feel more self-confident. You'll have a healthier mind because you'll be eating right. You know, if you get some exercise in there, do a bit of education, you know, feed the brain, all that kind of stuff. And you, you fancy having a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. It's attractive being able to take care of yourself. And it's something that I've been lacking in and I'm sure many of you out there will struggle with executive dysfunction. It's hard and there are a lot of negatives to being autistic and you just got to deal with it and you got to deal with the cards that you dealt. Just play them very well. Just don't compare yourself to other people. So imagine like the autistic brain is like this intricately coded specific computer that's designed for a certain set of tasks but it does it so goddamn well. So goddamn well. Darts up, does all the things that it needs to do, shuts down. But you've got to leave some of that processing power for maintenance, you know, you've got to keep those cooling fans on, you've got to do all of the, the regular tasks, you've got to have, you know, a few apps that let you organise things and, and structure things out and, and all of that kind of jazz. You know what I mean, it's different, you're different, and that's okay. Thank you very much for watching. Yes, the t-shirt is coming out once again. The Asperger's Grove Merchandise Store is available now. It's pretty cool. It's down in the description if you want to check out the link. This is my favorite t-shirt so far, but we've also got three others, including one that has both a back and a front. This one's just one-sided. We also have some mugs and some bags and some stickers that you can order. I'm not expecting many sales, and to be honest, I'm just doing it for you guys, just in case you want to have some Asperger's growth stuff, have some things that are to do with me. Why would you want that? But it's pretty cool anyway, get a t-shirt. Of course, I will be trying to upload on a better schedule. You can expect videos at least once a week. Still waiting to hear back from the National Diversity Awards, but I'm hopeful. And there's a lot of good stuff happening, guys. Like, uh, at some point, we're gonna break into the mainstream. At some point, we're gonna have an impact on things. I'm gonna try and bring as many of the autistic advocates on, in, on the Instagram community and on YouTube with me to try and make a change in our society, try and improve the mental health services available for all you lovely people try and integrate children more at a younger age so that we don't have all this bullying and social isolation and all those horrible experiences that are so common to autistic people. You know, if you want to follow my journey, it's, you know, you can find me on pretty much all social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all Asperger's growth. So if you fancy looking a bit more behind the scenes and stuff, then consider giving me a follow. Absolutely awful out there now. And I have promised myself that I'm going for a run, so I promise you that I'm going for a run because that seems to hold more of a waiting in my mind. So I'm just using you to go for a run, basically. Yeah. Um, stay cool. Stay fresh. Hydrate yourself. Hashtag hydrate the Aspies. And I'll see you in the next video on the Asperger's Grove channel by Thomas Henley. Bye. I don't know why I have to sneak my name in there. You know who I am. I'm the man!